I don't know how this is possible. And welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another cook with me video. Today guys, we are going to be making something very, very, very exciting. This is something that I used to make all the time when I first started delving into a plant-based lifestyle. So when I first started not eating dairy or eggs, I got really into baking. So I started baking random things that I could find on the internet and this was one of those things where I was like, is this is this real life? Because it almost seems too good to be true. It seems too healthy, it seems too good to taste so good, okay? But guess what guys, it still tastes good. And what we're making today are chickpea almond butter cookies. So chickpea almond butter chocolate chip cookies. So I would actually prefer to use peanut butter, but because I just seem to not have peanut butter in the house, I'm going to be using almond butter. But you can use peanut butter, you can use almond butter, both are, uh, are okay, why can't I speak? So I actually haven't made this recipe in a very, very long time. I don't even know which recipe I used before, but I found two recipes that look like they know what they're talking about, and then I'm gonna kinda combine it a little bit, mix up the measurements a little bit, and hopefully this will turn out. So yes, the main ingredient guys are chickpeas. They have lots of nutritional benefits. They are high in protein. They are just what I would classify as superfood. So beans are just really, really good for you. So this is a much healthier alternative to your traditional like peanut butter chocolate chip cookie because instead of using refined white flour, you are actually using chickpeas. So not only is this recipe gluten-free, but it is also higher in protein and it's much healthier. So you can feel better about eating cookies, okay. So if you've never heard of this, then well, you are welcome guys. You will now know the magic of chickpeas and chickpea cookies. Before I get started, I'm just going to sip on some water in my cheap lazy vegan mug. Link is below for the merch. Alright guys, so the first step, before I forget, because I always forget this step, is to preheat the oven. So we are going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is super simple guys, we just basically want to put everything into a food processor, other than the chocolate chip, which we will add at the very end, but everything else just goes straight into a food processor. It is that simple guys. So first I'm going to open up this can of chickpeas, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually save this water, this bean water, okay? because I kind of want to try something, okay. I want to try whipping it. There's this thing called aquafaba, which sounds really fancy, and when I first heard it, I was like, ooh, what's aquafaba? Well, it turns out the translation is literally bean water. It's Latin for bean water, guys. English, why you gotta be so not fancy? Ah, no! Ah, ah, ah. Ah, why do I do this to myself? All right, so I want to save the bean water. Okay, this is kind of messy because I was draining mushrooms before, but... So I'm going to save the bean water for a future recipe. Oh my god, can I do this? Ah. So yeah, they call this aquafaba, which is Latin for bean water. It just sounds so much better when you say aquafaba, you know? And so when you whip this for a long time, it actually gives the consistency of like whipped eggs like you know when you get that like really white i don't even know what to call this like that meringue sort of thing so yeah this is the bean water aka aquafaba which just sounds so much better bean water just sounds like bean water i think i can just store this in the fridge hopefully i don't know but i'll be whipping this in a few days so for the actual chickpeas i'm actually going to rinse them I'll be right back. All right, now let's add this into the food processor. The whole thing, guys. Beans. Next, we need some almond butter or peanut butter. So I'm gonna use this raw almond butter. You wanna use all natural almond or peanut butter. I need a spoon. So I'm just going to spoon it out and measure out three quarter cup. Man, that is thick. 
The almond butter is also high in protein, so we're getting lots of protein. People are going to comment this because every time I talk about high protein, someone comments and says, Have you ever heard of protein deficiency? It doesn't exist. Stop pushing the protein agenda. It's a myth that we need so much protein. Guys, okay, first of all, chill. Okay, let me just tell you. I know for a fact that for me, I've been vegan now for almost five years. I know for a fact that when I add protein into my meals, and I'm very conscious of that, when I add those things into my meals, I feel satisfied for longer, I feel satiated, I feel good, I have good energy levels. If I don't add additional protein to my meals and it's very, very heavy carb, it's very high carb, low protein, then I feel hungry in like an hour after probably eating a plenty of calories. So this is why I talk about high protein, I give you guys information about high protein. Whew, that's my rent. Anyways. Okay, what was I doing? And then we can add some vanilla extract. We're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. This is simply organic Madagascar, pure vanilla extract. You, you can use artificial vanilla extract, guys. It, because pure vanilla extract is very expensive. So if you don't care about that, just use artificial vanilla extract. We also need a teaspoon of baking powder. This is how I like to structure my meals. Most, most of my meals. I have some sort of a grain, preferably whole grain, and then I add in some source of plant-based protein. And then of course, veggies as well, lots of veggies. And then sometimes I'll add in healthy fats if I remember, like seeds, nuts, some avocado, things like that. <laughs> We're gonna do some maple syrup action. So you can use agave nectar, you can use maple syrup, one third cup of maple syrup. I think that should be plenty, hopefully. I don't want it to be too sweet. That defeats the whole purpose of trying to make this kind of healthy, you know? <laughs> Maple syrup, we got baking powder, and that's it, guys. That is it. Now, we're going to process this in my handy dandy food processor. I use the Ninja, uh, I'll link down below. I think they still have this around, I'm not sure, but this is like the Ninja something duo. So it comes with a food processor and a blender, and I have used this for quite some time now, and I love this thing. So I added a splash more maple syrup. It's already so good. <laughs> I was skeptical about using almond butter because I have never used almond butter for this recipe before. And also, I don't know, I just really like peanut butter, but man, it is so good already. It gives a different, different, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Experience. Now, last but definitely not least, we're gonna add in some chocolate chips. Now, honestly, guys, though, if you just baked it like this, I think it would still be very delicious. But because we're making chocolate chip cookies, we're gonna use some vegan chocolate chips. This is what I am using. For those of you people out there that don't know, a lot of chocolate chips out there are actually vegan friendly by accident. This one, for example, does not contain milk. Usually the semi-sweet chocolate chips are the ones that don't contain milk, but always check the ingredients list because it depends on the brand. Okay. All right, so we are going to try and toss in half a cup or maybe more of these vegan friendly chocolate chip cookies. And you could put this into a bowl. It would make your life easier, but I don't like to make my life easier. I like to make less dishes. Okay. Whew. So we're just gonna gently toss this. Yeah, this is possible. <laughs> so the mixture is very thick. It's gonna make some ooey gooey cookies, hopefully. And then guys, I'm gonna have a little bowl of water so I can wet my hands. That is the trick to handling sticky substances. So, these seem very gooey, actually. So I'm just gonna make little balls. Let's see what happens. It might be easier with a spoon. <laughs> but who knows? It's so sticky. <laughs> so yeah, if you're using a spoon or your hands, just make sure you wet your hands or spoon. This is like very cookie dough like, so I feel like you could just chill this and just eat it like a cookie dough kind of thing. Guys, this on its own is already so good. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to shape these bad boys to look like cookies. So wet the fork before you try to like flatten it. 
I'm not really sure how big these things are going to expand. So I'm gonna try not to flatten it way too much. And there you go, guys. I'm gonna stick this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's already preheated. I'm gonna bake this for about 12 to 15 minutes. Let's start with 12 minutes and see what happens. Oh my God! I'm sorry, but do these not look delicious? I feel like I should let them cool down. So they are very, very soft to the touch but I do think they will harden up in like 10 minutes. So I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes, let it harden up, and then we'll give it a taste test. A few moments later. All right guys, it has now been about 10 minutes and it does feel like it has hardened up a bit, although it is still quite soft. So I think you could get away with baking it for a little bit longer. I did 12 minutes, but I feel like you could get away with baking an extra like a minute or so But it did harden up and I'm sure it's still it's still quite warm. So I'm sure it's gonna harden up even more I'm just gonna give this a taste Mmm Mm-hmm You can definitely bake it for longer. It's very very soft. Mmm But it's very very good. You know what? I'm gonna bake it for another like two minutes or so and see if we can harden this up. All right guys, so I baked it for another two minutes. Now I'm not sure if that did much, but yeah, next time I'll probably bake it for about 14 minutes or so. And also I think another thing that I'm gonna do is actually, instead of adding an additional amount of maple syrup, I probably would add just some like a tablespoon or so of sugar, like coconut sugar or something, so that it doesn't become more liquidy because I think that's what happened. It's very, very soft. It's still very delicious, but it breaks apart much more easier than I would like. Although I'm not sure how it's gonna be once it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Once it hardens up. Mm. Oh, it's so good. You guys, this is so good. All right guys, I tried to transfer them onto a nice little what do you call this, board, and try to make it look all pretty. Now you guys know that I am not that aesthetic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna see if I can put a little bit of powdered sugar on top to see if we can make it look pretty, because I feel like anything with powdered sugar on top just looks better. I don't know if this is salvaging it, guys. But let me tell you, these are delicious. Yay! So there you have it guys, we have a super simple, super delicious, and not only that, a much healthier version of an almond butter chocolate chip cookie. So you can make this into a peanut butter chocolate chip cookie as we've discussed. These are gluten free, I mean, it's just so good guys. Highly recommend this. These will keep in the fridge at least for a few days. I would probably leave it in the fridge for up to like four days or so in a tightly sealed container. They will harden over time, but out of the oven, they are super soft and delicious. So give these a go guys if you haven't tried these yet definitely give these a go anyways i'm gonna say goodbye to you now thank you guys so much so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye don't mind if i do